Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to access your home server hosted services over the internet and do this in an easy and secure way using Caddy2. So let's get right into this. So firstly, I just want to explain where we're coming from here. So you might have a home network with a server and it's running various services like Plex, Home Assistant for your home automation and maybe some cloud storage or a network attached storage. And these are accessed by your various devices in your home that are connected to the same home network. So these would be, these services would be hosted on various ports on your server and you would type in an IP address or a URL that would let you access these. And of course your home network is connected to the internet using a internet router. Uh, but what if one of your devices was not on your home network and you wanted to access all your home services over the internet? How do you do this? So one way is to simply use your external IP address and then open up some ports on your router, uh, also known as port forwarding. So this would simply forward the ports to each of these services on your server and you would access them over the internet using the IP address. Now, obviously there's a few issues with this. For example, there's no security, there's no encryption. So all of the data that you send and receive while over the internet is open to eavesdropping, especially if you're using a random free Wi-Fi hotspot um, and you, you don't know who could be listening in on that data. Um, and then the second problem is that this IP address here might actually change your home, depending on the kind of connection you have, um, this IP address could just change at random and you have no control over that unless you're paying extra money to your ISP for a static one. So that's the other issue. And then thirdly, it's just plain ugly. I mean, you got a string of numbers you have to type in. If you want to share it with somebody else, you have to type them, ask, tell them to type in the same string of numbers and it's just ugly. So is there a better way to do this? How can we do this in a, in, in a way just like other websites do with a friendly URL? So one way to do this is to use a dynamic DNS. So this involves creating an account with a dynamic DNS provider and then setting up a script or a setting on your router if it supports DDNS or you could also install the same script on your home server so that would send updates whenever your IP address changes to this dynamic DNS and that would mean this URL always points to your IP address even when it changes. So when you have this set up you'll be able to access your services through a URL rather than the IP address. And this, um, this domain name <coughs> still requires you to enter each port for whichever service you want to access. So that solves the problem of the IP address changing, but you still don't have HTTPS encryption. So this means that anyone can still eavesdrop on all of your data and it's also still kind of ugly because you have to type in the port at the end of the, each of the URLs. Not as easy to remember. So what is an even better way to do this? So this is how it looks when you have a reverse proxy, for example, Caddy, which is what we're going to be looking at today. When you have this installed, it solves a lot of these problems. So now you have HTTPS security built in so you can access these from anywhere over the internet over any connection and nobody will be able to read your data because it will be encrypted using https 
and secondly uh, this uses the same uses the same domain name as before because it's using the same dynamic dns but we now have subdomains which we can access each of the services through so you no longer have to remember the port you just remember the subdomain of each service and secondly you may have noticed let's go back to before we had caddy uh, before we were forwarding all these different ports through our router so when you have caddy you only forward these two ports and caddy which is now running on your home server will automatically forward to the internal ports based on the subdomain in the url so this is a lot cleaner and more elegant and easier to use and you're only forwarding these two ports 80 and 443 to your home server which is running caddy and no matter how many other services you add you don't need to change any port forwarding so that's nice and easy and i'm going to show you how to set this up it's very easy to do with caddy so firstly i just want to talk about caddy it's, it's actually a, a lot more powerful than what we're going to, going to be using it for today you can for some of the more advanced users out there you may be familiar with a reverse proxy or virtual hosts um, it can do all that and one thing that I find is just way better with Caddy compared to some of the alternatives is that HTTPS just works automatically. You don't have to mess around with installing certificates. It just works magically. And I'm going to show you how that happens. And you can also do lots of other stuff. Host your own static websites, files. Um, you can even add extensions which enable PHP for dynamic websites and lots of other things so uh, some again some of you more advanced users might be familiar with these and these applications allow us to do some of these things and you may have used them before uh, i for one have used all of these things here but i no longer use any of them for my home server because caddy is just so much easier and so much better and so it basically replaces all of these So th these are the basic steps to set up what I showed you with Caddy to access all your services over the internet. So firstly, you're going to set up a domain name and a DDNS. So as I mentioned, this is required so that we can use a domain name to access everything rather than the IP address. Secondly, we're going to forward the ports and your router to point to your server. And as I mentioned, you only need these two ports. And then thirdly, we're going to install Caddy on the server and then configure it to route everything to all your different services based on the subdomain. So firstly, I'm just going to go over the first two steps very quickly. And you can find lots of tutorials about dynamic DNS and port forwarding. Uh, so just briefly, basically, if you don't already have a domain name, uh, I would suggest just go to duckdns.org, create an account and set up your domain names. You'll need a separate subdomain for each of your services. And then uh, take a look at the install instructions for DuckDNS. And I would suggest first looking at your router settings and see if you can set up your router to automatically work with DDNS. If not, if you have a simple router which doesn't support it, it's okay. You can just install a script that automatically runs on your server to enable DDNS. Okay, so once you have that set up, you need to forward the ports. And as I mentioned, it's just port 80 and 443. So take a look at your router. You'll have to Google this because it's different for every router. Uh, this link here is actually quite a good little article that will explain port forwarding and give you some examples of various popular routers. So check that out or otherwise try and Google your model of router and see if you can set this up. Uh, and you can remove any other ports. So if you had like one of your services on port 888, 
uh, you don't need that anymore. You can just do everything through this once Caddy is set up. So you can remove all the other ports. Um, and also just make sure that your server, which you're going to have Caddy installed on, is not running any services which are already using port 80 or 443 because otherwise we won't be able to use caddy so please change them to something else like 81 or 445 um, just check what ports are open and make sure they these two are available okay so now on to caddy so it's very very easy it's very simple so I would suggest to first check out the official documentation for Caddy. And that's just in case the instructions here become outdated. Uh, but basically at the time I created this video, if you have an Ubuntu server, you can easily install Caddy using these three commands. And that will also add them to your sources list, which means you can easily update them in future by typing sudo apt update so so now uh, once you've installed the installed caddy on the server by entering these three commands uh, then we can go on to configuring caddy so I'm just going to open up a console window and connect to my server So now I'm on my server using SSH and we're firstly going to enable Caddy as a system service. There's a few other ways you can run Caddy uh, just as a standalone executable, but I suggest running it as a service because it's just simpler and it'll stay running even if you restart your server. So to have it running as a As a service, simply type sudo systemctl start caddy. And you can also take a look at the status for caddy just to check that it's running. So you should see active running and hit control C to close that. And now we have it running, we're going to configure it. So the global configuration for caddy is stored in one text file. So let's open that file. Uh, so that text file is basically slash etc slash caddy slash caddy file. So here we have it open. Uh, there's a bunch of comments at the top which tell you how to, how to set up some basic settings. And I'm just going to scroll down to my settings here. So you can see I've got a few different services already set up. Um, this includes a media server, uh, my Nextcloud server, and Home Assistants. So this is basically, uh, each of these entries tells you where this subdomain should redirect to. So this is basically a reverse proxy setting. And this means that when someone tries to access your server using this subdomain and HTTPS, that's the port 443, then redirect that request to localhost and this port, which is the port for my media server. So use, you can use localhost when the service is running on the same computer as Caddy. If it's on a different computer, for example, my home assistant is running on a, another device and a different port. So I type the internal LAN IP address for that device and the port. So once you have all of your services reverse proxy settings set up here, uh, you can close that and save it. And then simply reload caddy. So after each time you change any settings, you should 
reload it if you're using the system service. So there you go. And once you have that all set up and running and assuming you have your DDNS and your um, ports correctly forwarded, that should be all you need to do. And then you just type in the URL into a web browser and you should see your service come up just like that. And you should also be able to click on the uh, lock or the secure connection icon and verify that you have a valid connection. If you don't see this, you might just need to wait a few minutes. Uh, sometimes Caddy takes, can take a little bit longer to get the correct certificate for uh, your subdomain but normally it happens within seconds. So there you go. Now you can access your services over the internet securely and easily. And you can see that that wasn't very difficult to do. All you needed to do was install Caddy and set up a very easy text configuration file and reload the service. So you can see how powerful that is. And the, the great thing is it does all of the security in the HTTPS automatically, and you don't need to touch anything um, or add any other applications to manage certificates. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And um, if you would like to see more or you have any comments or questions, feel free to post below. And otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.